We are truly pleased and blessed to have Stephanie Callahan with us today, who will be presenting How to Reduce Your Clutter and Clear Your Desk. Stephanie is the founder of Callahan Solutions, Inc., and is a nationally known speaker, business transformation coach, and personal productivity advisor. She has been consulting large Fortune 100 and small self-employed businesses since 1995, and is an expert at helping business owners leverage their systems, time, space, and information to get more clients opportunities, and an enriched life. She works with intelligent, highly motivated business entrepreneurs and understands that every person is unique and requires systems that work for them. Her company motto is, you don't have to do it our way because we can help you find your way. With a background in computer science and human resources, Stephanie has a unique right and left brain approach to solving client challenges. After applying her proven productivity methods, clients typically experience significant decreases in stress and errors, as well as significant increases in goal accomplishment and smooth business flow, which results in higher profits and decreased stress. Bottom line, Stephanie helps entrepreneurs unleash their freedom plan, boost their ability to get things done, and live their best life. Practicing what she preaches, she balances the demands of a business owner with her personal and volunteer schedule by developing systems that work specifically for her family's needs. As a result, Stephanie has plenty of time for her favorite pastimes, spending time with family and friends, reading, singing, working puzzles with her son, or just goofing off with their dog, Danny. Over the years, she has, active, she has had active involvement in national, regional, and local professional organizations and has contributed to her community through volunteer work with numerous organizations. She frequently speaks at conferences and workshops discussing business and personal productivity and how to gain focus so your business can grow and prosper. Most recently, Stephanie produced Fire Up Your Biz, Enrich Your Life, a series of 21 life-changing sessions from world-leading authorities on subjects of making money, productivity, success mindset, and more. If you miss the live interviews with Stephanie and these wonderful experts, you can purchase Fire Up Your Biz, Enrich Your Life program toolkit as a complete set, including the exclusive bonuses. And Stephanie has extended her early bird special to each of you attending, so take advantage and purchase today. I'll paste the link to where you can purchase the toolkit in the chat section of your webinar panel so you can take advantage of this excellent educational tool. And watch your chat section also for her contact information as well. Stephanie, welcome, and thank you for uh, interviewing, uh, for being with us today. I am so excited to be here today, and I am honored that so many people signed up to be a part of this webinar. Now, I want to take a few minutes to make sure that you are in the right place. You see, today we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. So we're going to be we're going to be covering what the true definition of organized is and why your definition may be different from your coworkers, your spouse or your best friend and so on. The top four time stealers in today's workplace, what clutter really is and how you can eliminate it, what you can do to combat overwhelm caused by too much paper, what you absolutely need to know before you toss out any piece of paper, what an indexing system is and how it can help you find anything in five seconds or less, and how to understand what your organizing style is and how to put it into practice. Now, I'm gonna be talking really fast and sharing a lot of information, but I wanna cover a few housekeeping tips first. First, turn off all distractions. I do get really excited and I talk really fast, 
and I don't want to go over on time here today. I value your time and I know that you value mine. So we want to stay on schedule here. Next, take notes. I encourage you to think through and just take notes on the things you're going to take action on. This session will be recorded so you can go back and pick up the details if you want. The important thing is to pick two or three things that you're going to do as a result of this session and then actually take action. I want to emphasize this part. You see, none of this stuff has any value if you don't do something with it. And then lastly, there are a lot of people on this webinar and even though technology has come a long way, it's still not perfect. So if there are any glitches, wait 15 to 30 seconds. And if it doesn't resolve, close out and go back to your email and click on the link to start the session again. So simply put, organization is finding what you need when you need it with little effort. And that's super easy, right? Well, I want you to relax. You see, being organized isn't about being perfect. And in fact, it's not easy for a lot of people. It's about how your environment functions, not how it looks. The aesthetics of a system are personal choices, but the organization is functional. And when you're born, you get a birth certificate and then thousands of people follow. So if you don't have good systems and the quality and your ability to handle it, it directly impacts your quality of life. So today we're going to talk about time, space, and information so that you can get greater results with less effort. Now listen, in my program, we have six solid strategies to help you unleash your freedom plan. That plan that allows you to do all of those things that you haven't been able to do. Now, obviously we can't cover them all in detail today, but later I'll share how you can know more. So I hope that sounds good to you. You see, people often ask me, Stephanie, what should I do? But the real question to ask yourself is what will I do? And that's what we want to explore today. So by the end of the session, you're going to walk away with strategies you can use right away. And I'll also show you how you can move from where you are to where you want to be. And you'll have some great next steps outlined. So does this look familiar? It does for a lot of people. And believe it or not, it also represents the top four time stealers for both business owners and business professionals. So let's talk about those top four time stealers since that's one thing that I said I'd promise, right? The first one is just lack of good systems. And the other thing I want to share with you is that this picture represents all four. So lack of good systems and processes for all aspects of your business. Also time and interruptions and interruption issues. The second area for time stealers is interruptions. And a lot of people, especially in today's I need it now society, feel that they need to be able to respond to people immediately. People are also having more and more of a difficult time saying no to things that they shouldn't necessarily be involved with. Is that you? What we encourage our clients to do is to think through how they can work most effectively in their day. And notice that if you don't have these first two things, it's hard to manage, right? But if you do have those things, it becomes much easier to manage your day. Develop a process and a strategy for how you will schedule your week, day, hour, and you'll have less stress worrying about getting things done. So try it and let me know how it goes. Then the third time stealer is lack of email and social networking strategies. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the number two reason that people contact us. Email has inundated us with extra information. And it doesn't matter if you're in the office or not. The email, tweets, Facebook updates, etc. just keep coming. So evaluate your electronic information and set realistic amounts of time every day where you'll deal with what's coming in. And where possible, use rules to help you manage all that. Now, we'd need a couple of days to really dive into each of these areas completely, but just knowing that they are time stealers can help you to begin to make changes in your own situation. And then lastly, that fourth major time stealer is problem structuring physical space. The physical setup of your office is important to the process flow of your day. So think of your space in varying forms of valuable real estate. Everything within your arm's reach 
is your most valuable real estate. Do you keep paperwork or reference material that you use on a regular basis far from your workspace? Does it get put away? The most frequently accessed items should be in the easiest reach to work out from that. Be intentional with how you set up your space. You see, people waste amazing amounts of time looking for things, and that's space issues, whether it's paper things or supplies or even electronic documents. And I have some clients that'll even recreate a document because they feel it's faster than finding what they made the first time around. In fact, the National Association of Professional Organizers found that 80% of the papers that were filed were never referenced again, largely because people couldn't find them. Now, some people love computers because they can cut down on paper clutter. And in fact, having a digital solution to storing your papers can be a very viable option. And that's something that we help our clients with. However, research has shown that the amount of paper we have is only growing. Computers have made our world a much more information rich society, but they've also created so much information that it's sometimes to track it all. And you see office like this one aren't really all that uncommon. So the first thing I want you to think about when you're looking at clearing up the clutter is not creating new clutter on top of what you already have. So when you get an email or a PDF file or any other document in an electronic form, ask yourself if you really do need it in physical form or if you can look at it online. Oftentimes people will print things as part of a habit rather than thinking through, do I really need this in physical form? Now, of course, if you do, and I'll admit, I don't like reading things that are really long in length on my screen. I need to print them out. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'll use creative print strategies where I'm printing on both sides of the paper to conserve paper and conserve space. But there are still instances where I too want it printed out. But the first tip here is to really think about it before you click the print. So why would someone want to get organized? What are the costs of that disorganization? I cover this because a lot of times we just think it's the clutter all around us, but there's more to it than that. So let's look at that for just a quick minute. First of all, there's lost time. There's time stymied in productivity, time spent looking for lost objects, time spent fixing objects broken under piles of stuff, or time spent shopping for, for replacements of lost items. Remember I said that the average person wastes 150 hours looking for things. That's big. Lost money. Money spent buying replacements for lost items, late fees for bills, lost in piles of clutter, it's so on and so on. Then some things that we can't even easily quantify, like lost serenity and increased stress, maybe damage to your credibility. You know, if you shudder when someone knocks on the door of your office, mm, maybe it's time to be thinking about how clutter is impacting your emotional state as well. And then lastly, lack of confidence. Feelings of anxiety due to the clutter, diminished competence, or maybe there's interpersonal tension or arguments among coworkers or family. No calm, quiet place to breathe and think so that you can grow your business. Now I mentioned a moment ago, you know, I have a lot of people tell me, but I find it eventually. Yeah, that's probably true for many people. But the average person spends over 150 hours a year just looking for information. And studies have gone on to say that the average executive and business owner looks for information over six weeks of their year. Now, I have a lot of people that tell me I don't have time to get good systems in place. When you look at these statistics, I'd encourage you to ask yourself how you have time not to put these systems in place. And lastly, let's look at the dollars and cents of it too. Your work is where you spend likely at least 33% of your daily time, and for many people, even more than that, and where you generate 100% of your income. If your business isn't effectively structured with good systems in place, it is costing you money. If you've looked for something for five minutes, how much have you lost in revenue potential? How many times have you looked for something and it took you more 
than 30 seconds to find. Besides losing money, what could you have accomplished in that time? So we've talked about some costs of that disorganization and why you might want to get organized. We've even talked about one definition of organized, but I wanted to share two with you today. And the second one is a definition that you may not be thinking of. But you see, organization is an art. They're top time stealers and physical space, like I said, is the number one reason that people contact us. So another way to look at the systems and processes that you have in your business, whether you are looking at the paper or any other system and process that you have as you're evaluating the functionality of how your business is operating is by asking yourself these questions. Does it work? Do I like it? And the one that a lot of people don't ask themselves, does it work for others? Now there's one more question here that I would encourage you to think about asking as well. How quickly can I recover? Now you see this last one is one that a lot of people don't know how to even evaluate. So let me share a personal story to illustrate that. As you're looking at your systems and you ask yourself, how quickly can I recover? This is a question that I had to ask myself in 2007, because you see, I had just come back from a conference. I was fired up about my business. I was really excited. And a few days later, my husband, who had just gotten a clean bill of health a month earlier, had a massive heart attack. We were in the hospital for eight days. And then there was eight weeks of recovery because of the amount of damage that he had. As you can imagine, I went from being totally fired up about my business to that really took a second priority. My husband's well-being and, and care for him became first priority. However, as all that was happening in our life, the email did not stop. The phone calls did not stop. The regular mail and the paper did not stop. And when I came back to my office and we were back to fully functioning mode again, and we did kind of move our way into that over the eight weeks, but as we were back into that mode, I had to ask myself, how quickly can I recover from this backlog of information that has piled up because life happened to me? And I found that a good majority of my systems and processes flowed really well. I was able to work through the backlog and get right back into work. And there were a couple of things that we needed to change and tweak and get a little bit more smoother going so that the next time that life happened, we could recover even faster. So think of those things as you're looking at the organizing systems and other business process systems that you have in place. So clutter equals decisions you're not making. Realize that and really absorb that. The piles of paper that you have on your desk, on the counters, on the floors, wherever those piles are, the emails that you have that are filling up your inbox, they're decisions you're not making. You know, have you ever walked into your office or room and one day you say, okay, today is the day I'm going to clean up this mess. And you pick up a piece of paper and you think of any number of reasons why today is not a good day to work on this. And then you pick up the next piece of paper and you say, huh? what is this? I'm not sure. And you put it down and you pick up another piece of paper. Oh, I'm not sure why I kept this. I'll have to figure that out. And you put that down. And before you know it, everything that was on the left side of your desk is now over on the right side of the desk. And well, the piles may be a little bit more nicely stacked together, but there are still piles. Is that familiar to you? You see, those postponed decisions can be found in three major areas because clutter is anything that you own, possess, or do that does not enhance your life on a regular basis. Now, I want to emphasize this here for you. Anything that you own, possess, or do which does not enhance your life on a regular basis. Many people think of clutter as things that surround us like piles, and that's certainly true, but we can also clutter up our schedule and our daily lives. And when our schedule and our daily lives are cluttered up, you don't have time to be putting in place the systems and processes or even just working your daily operations. So if decision-making is not your strength, accumulating things will be your weakness. So how do we put this all into action? 
Now, have you ever heard the phrase, only touch a piece of paper once? Before you create an organizing plan for your organization, evaluate the necessity of removing the backlog. And if you have a disaster of an office, you have to get it cleared out and start fresh before you can make a difference. Now, understanding my perspective on that only touch of piece of paper once is that it's a myth and that the only time that you should touch a piece of paper once is with Kleenex and Charmin. You see, when you're working on a backlog of items, your brain's gonna work faster if you work through things in a series of threes. And that only touch it once rule, I don't get me wrong, it's a valid rule. But the rule was in place with the assumption that you already had systems and processes in place, that the space was already clear. And once your space is clear and you have systems and processes in place, absolutely, only touch that piece of paper once and put it where it belongs rather than letting it pile on your desk. However, many people aren't there. And that's what we want to talk about. You have that backlog of information. So if you want to clear the piles from your desk and your life, uh, I want you to think DART. All right. So DART stands for decide, act, reference, and toss. On a high level, the most important thing here is deciding to decide. Because remember, I said clutter is postponed decisions. Clutter is decisions you've decided not to do. The decide to decide, the clutter and that backlog is caused by those postponed decisions. So let's go a little deeper and into a little bit more detail now. You see, there's an art in DART. So why do I say it's an art? Well, because it takes your creativity and thought to make it work everyone's going to process a little differently. And it's important that you filter the factors. Decision makers break it down. And that is what DART is all about. So for starters, there are a number of different questions that when you're going through that backlog of paper, you can ask yourself. And remember, we're talking DART here. So D is decision, A is action. So you're going to have a pile of papers for action. R is for reference, a pile of papers for reference, and T is for toss. All right, so let's ask those questions. The first one is, does it require any action by me or us? If it does, put it in the act pile. And that could be a phone call that needs to be made, something that needs to be written. I mean, anything where a verb is associated, where you need to do something, put it in that act pile. Next. Does it require any action by, or excuse me, does, are there any tax or legal implications to this information? Now, obviously, if there are tax and legal implications, then it's something you need to keep. So it'd be something that you put in your reference file, most likely, unless you're around the April timeframe where you're working on your taxes. It's generally something that you're keeping for reference until you need it for a later date. So it's a reference item. The next question to ask yourself is, is it recent enough to be useful? Now, we all keep things because I might need it someday. That's one that I hear from every single client I have. But as you're looking at your backlog, maybe there are things that you have kept because you might need it someday. But ask yourself as you're looking at it, is this information now recent enough? Is it current? Is it something that I could use today? Many of my clients find that the information that they've kept has now, they know that their industry has updated the information and that what they're holding in their hand is no longer useful to them. I had a client once who had an administrative assistant that asked this question uh, to him. He was a lawyer and he had a five shelf bookcase system of phone books. They were all phone books that he had kept because he might need them someday. And when she asked him, why do you have these phone books? He said, because I might need them someday. And she couldn't get him to let them go. And we asked, are they recent enough to be useful? Because some of those phone books were actually printed prior to my birth year. I mean, there were some old phone books in there. And as he looked at them, you know, he, he had originally kept them with the intention that he might want to know who practiced law in a particular community in a particular time. 
And he acknowledged that a lot of the actual contact information in those phone books would not be recent enough to be useful. Now, he couldn't quite bring himself to letting go of every single phone book, but we came awful close. They took an exacto knife and they cut out the yellow pages for lawyers for every one of those books and put that into one file folder. And then they removed and recycled the rest of the books and it freed up an entire bookshelf worth of space, which was really critical for this particular law firm because they were bursting at the seams and actually thinking that they'd have to pay for a bigger space. So great question to be asking yourself. Then another question is, is it difficult to obtain again? If it's hard to obtain again, uh, you know, personal examples are birth certificates, marriage certificates, uh, death certificates, you know, life, life event types of things. But you can also have things like your incorporation papers that would be difficult to obtain again, or certifications that you've earned that might be difficult to obtain again. If you have papers that are difficult to obtain again, it certainly makes sense to keep them if you have the space for it. So those would be reference items again. Now we have a few more things that you can think about in the backlog of clutter in your office, and that's, is it beautiful, useful, or loved? I have a number of clients that have gifts and reports and documents and things that they've received from clients that they absolutely adored that don't serve a purpose for them at that time. So it may be something that they don't find necessarily aesthetically pleasing, a, a, a painting or a photo or, or something that they received, and they have it because they received it from a client. It's okay to let those things go and make space for things that are going to enhance your workspace. It really is okay to let those things go to someone else that could appreciate them better. The individual that gave them to you wanted to bring you joy. They did not want to bring you stress within your space. Okay. Then the next question to ask yourself is, can I identify a specific use for this item? So again, this is a great follow-up question to that I might need it someday. Because you see that I might need it someday statement is a fear statement. And we hold on to a lot of things because of fear. But if you can ask yourself these questions, it'll help you get out of fear and into logical decision-making for your situation. So the can I identify a specific use question is the follow-up question to I might need it someday. For some people, you may have two totally different offices with the exact same type of information and one person could identify how they would use it and another person couldn't and you're going to have different responses for that same type of information. It's okay. It's about your space and what's going to work the best for you. So if you can identify how you might use a specific material, then go ahead and keep it. If not, go ahead and toss it. And then, does it reflect the person I am today? I can't tell you the number of clients that I work with where this question is really helpful for them. Because you see, I work with multifaceted, really smart, energetic, interested in life people. So a lot of the people that I work with, a lot of the business owners that I work with have taken various training courses, they've delivered different projects or products, and there are things that they've done with their past history, but maybe they're things they don't do today. I had one example is a client that had an entire closet filled with program material from a program that had been sold years earlier. And it was program material that was still fairly current, but the, the client hadn't sold this material in a very, very long time. And when I asked about it, the comment was, I worked really hard to create that stuff. And I don't just want to throw it away, but I don't really use it and I don't sell it either. And so it didn't reflect the person that he was anymore because it was the type of work that he wasn't doing anymore. So we said, you know, it doesn't really reflect who he was today. And we found solutions to let go of that information to people that could use it uh, in, in a form that would make him feel good about it just not going into a landfill. And then this last question is my personal favorite. 
It's one I use all the time when I have papers that I need to think about. What is the worst thing that could happen if I let this go? What's the worst thing that could happen if I let this go? You see, oftentimes, again, we keep things out of fear. So if we ask ourselves that follow-up question of, you know, how bad would it be if I let go of this? A lot of my clients will say, you know what? Well, I could find it on the internet really easily, or I have an electronic version of it in my desktop. Great. Then that worst thing ends up being not so bad. And you find that you can let things go when you identify what the worst possible thing is. Now, if that worst possible thing is really, truly horrible, then keep it. These questions are just meant to help you filter through what truly needs to stay versus what things you can let go of. All right, so we've talked about these questions and now you have this pile of information that's an action file, this pile of information that's reference, and then this pile of information that's toss. Now, I wanna, wanna pause here for a moment and talk about toss. To say that toss does not mean throw away. It could, but it doesn't necessarily have to. It could mean it doesn't belong in this room. It could mean recycle, shred, donate, sell. It's just toss, not in this room, okay? So let's look at that action pile. The action pile should have things in it when the ball is in your court. It could be things that belong in your inbox, your out box, or your to file box. Now let's talk a minute about that in, out, and file box. For years, multiple decades, people have had inboxes, out boxes, and file boxes. Some people use them really effectively and some people find that they just become places to hold stuff. An inbox means I haven't looked at it yet. I haven't processed it. It is not a place to hold your to-dos. It's a, just a spot to hold those things that I haven't processed yet. Your outbox is information that needs to go out of the office, whether it's to another person within your office, whether it's to the mailbox and so on. And then your to file box is information that's already been processed that you need to get into file folders that maybe you don't have the time right at the moment to do it. The trick is to not have those in, out, or file boxes too terribly deep so that it doesn't create a backlog right there. Now another action area is your calendar, planner, palm, PDA, smartphone, iPhone, and all the other ways that you can hold your information. And action files. Now, if you're interested in getting a, a video or a checklist on how to create a fabulous action system, uh, I'd encourage you to send us an email. Uh, just email support at callahansolutions.com and we'll send you that information because uh, we're not going to have time to go into it in huge detail today. So then let's also talk about that reference pile. Reference information is information you want to keep. It's your contact manager, your reference files, and I strongly encourage you to consider Paper Tiger. It's your address book if you don't have a contact manager. It's all those places that you would go to, could be binders, could be books, could be hanging file folders, could be file folders such that you would see in a doctor's office. The physical makeup isn't where I want you to focus here. It's the information that you need to access but you don't need to access it necessarily on a daily basis. So we learned back in preschool that trying to fit a square peg into a round hole just doesn't work. And no matter how we turn it to make it fit, it just, it, it doesn't. Yet we try to do it all the time by putting systems in place that don't match our personal or our organizational styles. So by being really realistic about your lifestyle and your personal style and focusing on the way that you live, it will help you get the right things in place for you. So be realistic about your lifestyle. Be realistic about your personal style. So lifestyle is the types of things you like to do. Are you really active? Are you quiet? Being realistic about your personal style is more around how you work best. And we're going to talk about that in a little more detail here too. Be, understand that style and build the systems around it so that you're not doing the square peg into the round hole and then make the system fit your life. Just as there are different communication and learning styles, 
there's different organizing styles and productivity styles. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. You see, there's some that think that one system should work for everybody. And that'd be great, but the world's not that simple. In fact, you know, people have different thinking and learning styles, communication styles, working styles. They have different rates that they can learn and absorb information. The science of systems and organizing is the tip, is the tool, but the art is knowing which tips and tools are going to work for you. So how does this tie into productivity? Well, understanding your style and developing systems that fit with who you are sets you up for success. So I want to ask you, are you an innie or are you an outie? Now, I'm not talking about belly buttons here. I'm talking about processing styles in the way that you think. You see, an innie is someone that functions better and can think clearer when everything is behind closed doors and the space is clear of clutter. An example of an any type tool is a regular file cabinet. It's a tool because it holds things and you can work with it. And it's an any system because when the doors are closed, you can't see what's in it. Now let's go to the reverse side of that. An Audi is someone who holds the adage out of sight, out of mind. They need to see it in order to know it exists or to even take action on it. Now, Another sample here for an Audi system that does the exact same thing is a rolling file cart. You see, for people that are an Audi, if you are an Audi, the biggest challenge you have is not remembering that the files are even there. It's a different way of thinking. So the files are still structured and organized in files, but they're in a tool that keeps it out where you can see it and it's top of mind for you. And I want to pause here for a moment and really drill down. In determining whether you are an any or an Audi, just because you have piles of papers all over the place does not make you an Audi. I'm talking about systems that work differently for different people in how you think and work. Here's another example of an any system versus an Audi system. One that has things closed behind closed doors and one that has things on open shelving. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of people that struggle with attention deficit are Audi style, but you want to test that as well and recognize that when you have an Audi style, you've got to be really careful and guard against the stacking and spreading that can occur when you have multiple horizontal surfaces. Another example of an any and Audi system is here with an armoire where your computer stuff is all closed up when you're not using it versus a system where it's all out in the open at all times. Now I'll tell you, I am personally an any with a little bit of Audi tendencies. So here's how I evaluated that personally. I know that I can get easily distracted with the things that are on either side of my peripheral vision. So if I had a lot of piles of paper all over the place, or if I had projects out all over the place, I'd be focused on one thing in front of me and my peripheral vision would say, oh right, I've got to do this. Oh right, I've got to do that. And I could get distracted. I'd waste time. By having things behind closed doors, I focus on the thing that is important to me at the time, whether it's in front of my computer screen or whether it's a document on my desk, and then I move on to the next thing. For people that are Audis, that doesn't occur. If it's behind closed doors, they may even forget that the project exists. So those are some different tips and strategies that you can think through of how do I really work best? How, where do I find that I am at my clicking best? in terms of really thinking through things and then set up the systems that work for you in that way. Now I talked earlier about action filing and there's a lot of ways to process those to do's and those things that you can work on. And once you've figured out your physical space and furniture, it's time to look at more detailed tools and some are more effective than others. So we talked about those act, reference, and toss piles, and let's look at that action file again. But this time I want to encourage you to consider building an action filing system. One that has monthly and date, a tickler system to speak, as well as by action needed or verbs. Now this is where you put 
all that paper that needs you to do something with it until you can take the action. It's kind of like a parking lot, if you will, for your paper. Now, I don't have time today to go into the specifics of how to create that action system, but if you write an email to support at callahansolutions.com, we'll make sure to send you information for how you can pull your own action system together. Now, after the action filing, you had reference paper, and there's three different overall strategies that you could look at to putting a good reference system in place. The first one is traditional alphabetical. Then there are pre-developed systems that are out there as well. And lastly, one of my favorites, Paper Tiger. So how many of you think that you could find what you need in this file cabinet? It's actually a traditional alphabetical filing system um, that has turned into looking like this over time. Because you see, alphabetical filing systems typically look very easy and structured and well, you know, cared for when they're first created. It's that files and information added to over time that have a tendency to clutter up and jumble up the system. And if you'll actually look here, there are three or four different alphabetical filing systems. If you look at the very back of this picture, there's a couple tabbed labels. And then if you look kind of in the center where those green and red are, it's some of those great Sneed, uh, you know, easy view filing tabs in there as well. So there's multiple filing systems within this fi one file cabinet. And that's probably because the user originally created one system and it didn't work quite well. So let's, let's try another. And they just kind of all merged together. But bottom line, they couldn't find anything. And that's one of the challenges with a traditional alphabetical system. The next idea is pre-developed systems. And these are some examples of just a couple of them that are out there, um, but they can be either really fantastic for you or a nightmare. Now, I mentioned earlier that everybody has a way of thinking and processing and working through information. So these predefined systems can work great for some people if you happen to have the same thinking style as the people that made the predefined system. But if you don't, then you spend a tremendous amount of time trying to remember what the system wants you to remember rather than having a system that works for the way that you think. So you've got to think through whether that predefined system is going to work for the way that you think. The, the drawback versus the benefits of setting it up and think through that thing. And then lastly, I'd encourage you, um, I know there are some people that are in this webinar that are already happy users of Paper Tiger, but we also learned that there were a number of people that are not users of Paper Tiger either. So we want to talk about Paper Tiger here, right? You see, you can find anything in five seconds or less and it can be developed for how you think. Now, one of my degrees is in computer science, and when I was first introduced to the concept of Paper Tiger, I, well, honestly, I really didn't buy into it. Um, I didn't think that there was a way to create a software program that could be flexible enough that for the needs of my clients, because I don't believe in one-size-fits-all solutions, and I didn't think that a software could meet the needs of the variety of clients that I work with. But I was pleasantly surprised and wrong. And when I took the time to learn about Paper Tiger a number of years ago, I was really excited. Because you can see, I have helped loads of clients implement Paper Tiger. But what's amazing is that we have not implemented it the same yet. Because every business is different and every business has different ways of needing to look for information and process information. So the cool thing about Paper Tiger is that you can find anything in five seconds or less, and it's easy to learn. It even preserves your confidentiality, but it can be developed for how you and your organization think and work. Now, regardless of what type of system you create, I also encourage you to have an index regardless. And a file index helps you or anyone else quickly find what's needed. So an example of an index that most everybody should be able to relate to is your high school yearbook. Within your high school yearbook, you can go to the back of the yearbook 
and you can look up you, the name that you had when you were in high school and it will show you that you are on pages 5, 7, and 53. So rather than having to flip through every single page of that yearbook, you can go to 5, 7, and 53 and show your children how the crazy hairdo that you had back when you were in school and they can laugh. Or at least, well, I'll tell you that that happens when I show my son pictures of when I was in high school. <laughs> I had gravity defying hair back then and he thinks that's funny. But the, the point here is we didn't have to flip through every single page in that yearbook. We were able to go right to the pages that applied to us. And that's what a file index does for you. So this is an example of you know, what you see on your screen is an example of a sample one that we created, just a quick one so that we could do a snapshot. And you'll see that they're sorted by alphabetical order and we can do a quick cert and I can go look and say, oh, you know, reference 253 has our 2006 bank statements so that we can go get them quickly um, in the event of a uh, tax audit, for example. And we could get to them really quickly, but it's not necessarily information that we need to access on a daily basis. The index helps us find it fast when we need it. So once you have your decisions made around the paper that you've got and you have physical processes, tools, um, furniture in place that works for the way that you think and work, then you've got to put it all into action. So Kathy Waddell, and that's W-A-D-D-I-L-L, -L, she wrote a book called The Organizing Source Book. And she, she wrote this a number of years ago, but it's, it's still a, a very good read for people today when it comes to organizing systems and processes around organizing. Because she went and researched to figure out the nine strategies of reasonably organized people. And see, before Kathy's time, everybody went and looked at disorganized people and f tried to figure out how to make them organized. And Kathy looked at it from the opposite angle and said, well, let's look at people that are reasonably organized. Let's look at people who have been identified as they've got their stuff together. And let's see what commonalities they have. And she did that for over nine years. And her book describes the ways that p other people have solved common organizing dilemmas using simple principles. And so here's what she found. The first one, not surprising to me, decide to decide. We've talked about that a lot today. It's important to make a decision to make a decision. Next, sort everything by how you use it. Now this is a little different because one of the normal organizing themes so to speak, that, that people here is putting like with like, you know, put all your scissors together, put, you know, and, and put all your paper together. What, what Kathy found was that people sorted everything by how they used it. So for example, let's, let's assume that you are working out of your home for this particular example. If you put all of your scissors together, then the scissors that you use for preparing food, the scissors that you use for the gardening that you have outside, and the scissors that you use to cut paper in your office would all three be in the same drawer. Clearly, the uses for those things are very different. So rather than having all your scissors together in one space, it makes a lot more sense, and you're probably sitting here saying who would do that, but it makes a lot more sense to have the kitchen scissors in the kitchen, the gardening scissors near all the other gardening tools, and the office scissors in your office. Now, that's a really simplistic example, but I like to try to give examples that most people can relate to so that you can then think through how does that apply in your office as well. Sort everything by how you use it. Then, weed constantly. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that term constantly. Constantly and the rate with which you weed through things directly correlates to how quickly those things come into your environment. So if you have an, a busy office environment where you're getting inundated with information and paper on a regular, very fast pace, then how often you weed through things should be much more frequent than offices that have a slower pace of information coming in. But when you go through that information, asking the questions that I taught you today, the weeding constantly will be much less painful than what you've experienced in the past. Then use the right containers and tools. You see, I have a lot of clients that will go and buy the organizing tools before they've figured out what they want to use them for. Notice that the sorting and the weeding in this list I've listed first. 
figure out what you really need to organize before you go buy the tools. Oftentimes, people have bought so many organizing tools that the tools themselves have become clutter. And don't let that happen to you. And then keep it simple. Build your systems with the, few, the fewest steps possible. The more steps it takes to do something, the less likely you are to actually do it. The next step in Kathy's system, label everything. Now, I've talked with a lot of people who think that labeling is not a very good use of time, but I will tell you that labeling is your memory and brain replacement. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you don't have a good memory, then labeling can save you on a daily basis. If you do have a good memory, what I find in working with my clients, especially those with really good memories, is that when the heat gets turned up, when things get really stressful, all of a sudden they forget things that they may normally remember on an everyday basis. By having labels in place, it does two things. It helps you be able to remember those things when the heat gets turned up, and it allows you to delegate a lot better too. So label everything and get help when needed. Now that could mean working with someone like me that does uh, business transformation coaching, or it, it could mean working with someone in your office who happens to be very skilled in an area you need, your neighbor, a coworker, someone in your mastermind group. Uh, there's a lot of different options, but when you get stuck, be okay asking for help. That's gonna move you forward a lot faster. And evaluate continuously, life happens. You know, there are things that we do in our business when we first start our business that completely change as our business evolves over time. So evaluate the systems and processes that you have placed around the paper in your office and around all the other processes that you have that you need to make your business run. And you're going to be able to keep things on a really calm, cool, flowing basis. So today we have covered so much. We have talked about what organizing is and what it's not, and expose the cost of disorganization. We've learned that clutter is and what we have and what we do. We've identified how and where to start, and we've discovered the top time productivity stealers. Identify how and where to get started, okay? So here are a few before and after shots of clients that use these techniques to gain control of their office and their time. Just so you know, it is possible. Within these pictures I'm showing you, they are actually um, photos of people that have used the exact DART system and the other things that I've shared with you today. So it's totally possible to get it all under control. And here's a few more. And, and, you know, I sometimes have people ask me, Stephanie, did you stage these photos ahead of time? The answer is absolutely no. Um, the, the clients that call us in, call us in for a reason. And we help them go through and use that DART system. Some people have more backlog than others. And, you know, you got to work through that backlog before you can get the systems and processes in place that are going to work for you. In this particular case, um, this individual had taken this office over from a predecessor. She had been in the office for 12 years when she contacted us and a lot of the paper, and I, I, when I say a lot, I mean like over 70 to 80% of the paper that was in her office was not hers. She had file cabinets uh, under that desk that you see her sitting at and she had file cabinets um, elsewhere in the office. But what occurred was that when she took the role over, she said, well, my predecessor has, has saved all this information for a reason, so I'll, I'll look at that someday. Twelve years later, the someday really hadn't happened, and, and all of her stuff has accumulated too. So it was, it was, one, it was really fun going through the information. There was some great historical stuff from, um, well, some stuff literally from the 1800s. It was extremely interesting. But we got that information into a spot where people could appreciate it. We cleared up her space and put systems in place to be able to help her actually function in her office rather than running and hiding from it like she said she used to do. And here's another before and after. And then the last before and after that I'll share with you here today. Now I shared with you, the average person wastes 150 hours just looking for things. The average executive wastes 106 
or excuse me, six weeks a year just looking for things. The truth is every performance gap, every little inefficiency, every lack of organization or productivity not only reduces the effectiveness of your business, it also steals time from your personal life. This is true for all business owners. You see, the purpose of a productive and organized environment is to enable you to accomplish your goals and enjoy your life. So what would that mean to you? What's your freedom plan? Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this program, there are a number of things that can steal time and profit from a business. So we just covered one small piece today. And Janet and I talked, she told me that she wanted me to offer some really special on this webinar to Paper Tiger attendees, and I agreed. So I love rewarding people that take action to change their situation. So we decided that the best way for you to move forward and take action would be if you had a solid plan for your situation. So I've blocked time off on my calendar for a limited number of people to talk directly with me and get your specific questions answered and develop a plan to move you forward. So if you are ready to transform your business and your life and your work, and you want to find real ways to claim your time and your space, then this session is for you. If you know that you'd like to make some changes, but you're not sure what to do first, second, or third, and you'd like to have a plan to get from where you are to where you want to be, then email support at callahansolutions.com and let us know that you'd like to schedule a session. We'll send you an intake form and a way to schedule your appointment, and we'll identify a plan to help you get into action. But there's a catch. Well, actually two. One, this session is fast. So in order to get to the heart of the issue you're dealing with, I'm sometimes short and to the point. We want to be able to, for you to have things that you can take action on right away when you hang up. And two, as you could have guessed, I can only allocate a few hours to helping people like you on a free basis. So it's really a first come, first serve scheduling. But wait, it gets better. Um, Janet, I know that you wanted me to talk a bit about the Fire Up Your Biz Enrich Your Life program too. So let's share a bit about this. Janet mentioned the Fire Up Your Biz Enrich Your Life program um, earlier in her, her introduction for me. And we decided to let you get this at the early bird discount price of $97. Now, I've pulled together experts that are amazingly knowledgeable, caring, and giving, and they wanted to help answer your business questions. After all, this is about firing up your business, right? So it was born out of thousands of conversations that we have had with business owners just like you about what holds them back from really going where they want to go with their business. So we knew what was needed to fire up your business to the next level and free up your time so that you could live the life you dreamed of when you started your business. We identified the critical topic areas and then we connected with some of the world's best authorities on those topics. Our experts aren't just trainers who train trainers who train trainers. They are in it, working with their clients, all kinds and sizes of businesses, helping them grow their business daily. Plus, we have some pretty awesome Q&A sessions, as well as some great bonuses. And if you're at all interested in learning more, just head over to fireupyourbizenrichyourlife.com slash paper tiger. Uh, there's well over 27 hours of audio, and I look forward to inviting you to do that as well. Thanks. Awesome information, Stephanie. Thanks so much. Um, we so appreciate your time and, and sharing of your expertise. Well, I'm glad to be here, and thank you, everybody, for hanging in and listening, and I look forward to seeing all the questions that came in on the chat form as well. Okay. All right, everyone. I know you benefited from Stephanie today, so contact her to get on her schedule. She may be in Illinois, but she is nationally recognized as an expert and works with people in person and virtually to customize the system to help make their lives more productive and organized. There's not a magic bullet. Stephanie and I were talking about this early, earlier, and just like she said on the presentation, decisions have to be made and then action has to be taken. And you know, everyone's brain doesn't work the same, so you may need a professional to come in and help you. So if you're frustrated with trying to get organized and, and more productive by yourself, 
and you think you need some professional help, I encourage you to call Stephanie and get on her schedule. She will help you implement a system customized just for you and your staff. And you'll be amazed at how much more productive you'll be in no time at all. If you are looking for someone that can help you help take you to the next level, I believe you probably realized after today's presentation that Stephanie is your business transformation power now. Okay, Stephanie, did you want to add anything else? No, I, I thank you everybody for being here and for working through some of the technology challenges and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks again everyone for attending today's webinar.